Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Murder, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of Poirot, Murder She Wrote, Diagnosis Murder, or Jonathan Creek. Today, I'm looking at Murder She Wrote, Murder on Madison Avenue. Or as I like to call it, that time I was bored by board games. We begin the episode with Jessica on a lift being reverse pickpocketed before she heads into a toy store where a business meeting is going on, led by Meredith Delaney, who mentions a game being made with Jessica's input. Brian, played by Angela Lansbury's in real life nephew, introduces her to Miles, who turns around and bites Boris's head off. Meredith introduces her husband, Devery, is that a name? Before she yells at someone down the phone for allowing a reporter named Stromberg into the meeting. Devery is excited about the game, but Meredith is salty that the company's owner, Edgar Greenstreet, stole some of her ideas. Jeez, this is one hell of a character and information dump in the space of five minutes. Jessica goes to dinner with Brian and Amanda, played by horror mainstay Caroline Williams, and they also badmouth Edgar, before Jessica finds the note in her bag. She asks about the room listed, which is apparently in the basement, and Amanda goes up upset for God knows what reason. Brian rushes after her, but she cusses him out. Okay then, and Jessica goes to the mystery door, types in the code, and finds herself. What the fuck is that? Why are you laughing, Jess? That shit is terrifying. A train passes through, and then an R2D2 knockoff accosts Jess, but it's Edgar that jump scares her, and they talk about the board game, which sounds awesome. Can I play? He says to ignore Meredith's bitching, and while the gunslinger distracts her, Edgar disappears. Speaking of Meredith, Boris is worrying to her about their future in the company, so she says to try and recruit Amanda, but warns him not to hook up with her, before a noise interrupts their canoodling. Boris picks Amanda up in a limo, which is immediately followed, and he offers her a job, and to meet him the next night with an answer. Meredith hates this dump truck toy, even though it's awesome. Poor Frank. But he does get to meet Jessica, and she likes it. Meredith tells Jessica to stop hanging out with Edgar, but she says no and stomps out, where Sylvia tells her to chill, and Devery calls Meredith out for having an affair with Boris, but denies being the one who's been recently spying on them. She fires him and reminds him of their prenup agreement, while Boris schmoozes Amanda with champagne and a kiss, which Meredith sees. Jessica asks Brian for help with advertising the game, but he's distracted because Amanda is moving jobs, and Meredith slaps Boris for the kiss before threatening to drag his name through the mud, which Devery finds funny. At a fancy party, Edgar gives presents to those who have been with the company for 20 years, including Meredith and her secretary, Sylvia. Right, they've just been given matching earrings, so Sylvia's gonna kill Meredith then. Good to know. Edgar takes Jess off to dance, Wait, it is him! I've been staring at this guy for ages and now I know where I recognize him from. It's Higgins from Magnum PI. Brian tries to patch things up with Amanda, but she doesn't care and makes a beeline for Boris, who breaks the news that he's been fired. After the party, Jess asks Meredith if she's seen Brian, but she receives a panicked phone call and rushes off. So Jess goes to the basement for a booty call, but finds everything wrecked with Meredith's body going round and round. Hornberg finds an earring on the floor and thinks the motive was wrong robbery, and then Sylvia shows up who's wearing both earrings, I checked, hmm. Devery tells Hornberg that lots of people didn't like Meredith, but no one hated her enough to kill her, and isn't sure who knew the code for the basement room. However, Sylvia goes to get the list, and Edgar says he thinks the plans for a revolutionary new toy is what Meredith was killed for. Devery spills the tea to Jess about Meredith's affair, and how their prenup doesn't stop him inheriting now she's dead, so she asks if he's the killer. J.P. Fletcher has to ask that. I better get myself a good lawyer. The next day, Jess rings Amanda asking about Brian, but she hasn't seen him, and she goes to see Sylvia for some paperwork before running into Hornbeck, who says everyone with the code to the basement room had an alibi, even though Frank withdrew a load of money and took off this morning. A phone call from forensics paints Brian as the killer, so of course... Brian? <gasps> oh, Lieutenant, I'm afraid you're jumping to some very fast conclusions. Uh, Jess, his fingerprints were on the murder weapon. She tracks him down, and he says he followed Edgar last night, but he disappeared. So in trying to locate him again, he found the basement room open and went in, falling over the murder weapon. So he took off. And then Edgar, in his jaunty hat, calls Jess for a date. She agrees before asking Brian if he's the murderer, to which he says no, before telling him he's an idiot and making him ring the police. And then she goes to Frank's building and sweet talks the super into letting her into his place. Although he does mention his sister had just stopped by. Ninja Jess finds Amanda in the closet and they discuss how someone must have bribed Frank for the access code before Amanda takes off her earring to make a phone call, which sparks something in Jess. Whoa, what is 
Whoever's with this lamp, that should have been the murder weapon. That thing looks lethal. Anyway, Jess goes to see Sylvia to ask about Meredith's ever-growing shares in the company, but she doesn't want to talk, so she heads down to the basement and chats with Edgar about possible suspects, including him. She accuses him of luring Meredith to the basement with the promise of the revolutionary toy project, but Jess reckons it never existed, because it can't have been stolen, as Edgar said, as he got to the crime scene the same time as her, and didn't have a chance to check for his whereabouts. Sylvia comes out of the red smoke and reveals that she had had enough of Meredith being a dick, especially to Edgar, and Jess mentions that Meredith's earrings were clip-on, so the pierced earring at the crime scene was Sylvia's, which came off when she killed Meredith. So she put her clip-on on instead to cover it up. Sylvia turns herself in and admits that she killed Meredith before she got too many shares to push Edgar out of the company. And the next day, Jessica finally gets her board game. Edgar tells her he's working on a virtual reality toy and Brian and Amanda announce they're setting up their own company and try to schmooze Edgar into joining them. Well, I am hugely disappointed. The description of this episode reads, Jessica plays a real life version of her murder mystery board game when the toy company she's working with becomes the scene of a crime. So I was expecting something cool involving parallels to the game that they're playing at the same time, but nope. Instead, we don't even get to see the game except right at the end. And we spend almost half an hour with the inner workings and office politics of a toy and advertising company before somebody finally gets murdered. This episode reminds me of the diagnosis murder episode I reviewed the patient detective, where it had the potential to be awesome but got too bogged down with trying to be clever and overcomplicating itself. The most interesting part of the episode is the basement room and all its creations. So for me, it's a pity that Meredith didn't die via gunshot because they could have tied it in with a gunslinger animatronic. The episode itself was pretty boring with a lot of talking and not enough gaming, but what I did like is the clues were all there to follow as opposed to some episodes where Jessica confronts the killer with a clue that she discovered off screen. To me, it was really obvious that Meredith, the most unlikable character, would get murdered by Sylvia because she was always present and was given identical earrings. But even if you don't watch these kinds of shows loads like I do and know what to look for, you can still work it out based on the evidence given. One mistake with this one though is the earring found at the crime scene had the back on it so it can't have come out in the struggle unless it took Sylvia's earlobe with it. But whatever, there was no murder game in this episode so I'm disappointed. Our victim today is Meredith Delaney, who hooked up with too many people and was generally a dick, so she was offed by our killer, Sylvia Moffat, who took 20 years to finally snap and kill her before Meredith took over the company. So there you have it. That was Murder on Madison Avenue. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. Or consider subscribing if you want to keep investigating with me. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you soon and keep an eye out for clues.